John Schindler is a singer-songwriter who comes from originally St. Louis, Missouri, now comes from the New Hampshire area. And in reading some reviews about John and his work, I noticed he was described uh, by one reviewer as being wise, a bit dark, a bit light of wit as well. And I noticed on his website, his bio description of self also reflected some of that humor about him. John indicates that on his bio that he was influenced early by the town of St. Louis, Missouri's rhythm and blues in his Oklahoma mother's singing, and by a nine-year stint in a Catholic seminary where silence and Gregorian chant were his daily bread. After leaving the Brotherhood and armed only with his vow of poverty, John moved to New England and pursued the path of itinerant musician playing in sundry bands and bad bar rooms. It was during this time he realized his audience could not understand Latin. <laughs> <coughs> he went forward writing not only impressive folk songs, but award-winning ones as well, and he's been a finalist in a number of other song contests. He's the winner of the 2003 Boston Folk Festival Songwriting Contest and the 2006 Rose Garden Coffeehouse Song Contest. John has two CDs of his original songs, including Memory Train and Two-Step Man. And as we mentioned earlier with Dan Lewis, John also comes from a home with two cats, <laughs> Godzilla and Aiko. And he lives in Man Manchester in Booth Bay Harbor with his wife, Jane, and the cats. So please welcome John Schindler up to share some of his original songs. I um, haven't been laughing very much in the last couple of weeks, so I thought I'd do a song about uh, somebody that does laugh. Sound? I remember laughing Alice lived in a big log palace beneath the aurora borealis up in the great north wood she was kind she was merry and quite extraordinary she would smile when things got hairy up in the great north wood when the world seems cold and calloused I remember laughing with Alice Laughing with laughing Alice And her skills were quite bewitching making pancakes in the kitchen while the boys were out ice fishing way up in the great north Wood, she would tease you and cajole you and she'd never ever scold you why if you're sad then she would hold you up in the great north Wood. when the world seems full of malice i remember Laughing with Alice Laughing with laughing Alice And I guess there's no good reason We stayed throughout the season Cause our all were freezing up in the great north wood and i know there are no signs there still no road that winds there she's sleeping neath the pines there up in the great north wood when the world seems cold and calloused 
I remember laughing with Alice, laughing with laughing Alice. You know, after I left the seminary, I uh, used to go hang out at a place called the 400 Lounge. It was a place where they had bands, and, and there were girls there, and uh, there was dancing. And I could never bring myself to ask anybody to dance. But so I used to just stay at, sit there and watch the, watch, drink my beer and watch the uh, notes go up to one of them sparkly balls on the ceiling and fly all over the ceiling. And uh, so this is called, this is called tuning. <laughs> Stardust Ballroom. The Stardust Ballroom. We sought romance. We just played air guitar. We did not dance, we did not tango, we did not twist, we did the limbo, we did not kiss, did not kiss, won't you take me out dancing, won't you hold me with feeling? can watch the notes from the bandstand float to the stardust ceiling. Won't you hold me close, she said. Don't you have that feeling? I just feel lost like the stars across the stardust ceiling. Ginger are How long we waited They were too mysterious Too sophisticated But we were invited We had our chance But someone decided We did not dance did not dance Won't you take me out dancing Won't you hold me with feeling Can watch the notes From the bandstand float to the star ceiling Won't you hold me close, she said Don't you have that feeling I just feel lost like the stars across the stardust ceiling. Where have the boys gone? Who knew no fear? They're home watching Jeopardy. They're home drinking beer. Where From damsels fair There's somebody's misters With frost in hair Won't you take me out dancing? Won't you hold me with feeling? And watch the notes From the bandstand float To the stardust ceiling that feeling I just feel lost like the stars across the 
stardust ceiling I just feel lost Like the stars across the stardust ceiling I just feel lost Like the stars across the stardust ceiling Uh, how many of you people have pets? I'll just see a show of hands. There's not that many. Dogs? Dog, dog people? And cat people? I'm a cat person. Of course, cat, cat. Uh, wolverines? <laughs> uh, children? <laughs> this is a song about dogs. I've no, I don't have one. You'll find them running wild in the roads of Rome The alleys of Mumbai, the streets of Paris You'll find them lying round hearth and home It's old Canis Familiaris Often easy to command Hell they'll eat right from the master's hand willing to attend Fido man's best friend now the, a dog is something more than a cartoon full of eagerness and loyalty although we catch them howling at the moon and much worse they still treat us like royalty But watch him chasing his tail around To the animal kingdom He's a circus clown But to them we still extend Rover, man's best friend now this last verse is about a specific dog in the year is 1958 and we're in Russia and they're going to put an animal on Sputnik. They found her on a lonesome Moscow street. They called her Laika. That means Barker. Perhaps they caught her with a little toothsome treat. Now as ever, the tale gets darker. They wired her up in a satellite, and they shot her in to the starry night. And faithful to the end, like a man's best friend. And so I still can't find Why we call mankind uh, This last song I would like to uh, do and uh, I wrote this uh, I guess I don't know it was 2003 and um, there was a truck that came across the border into Texas and uh, uh, actually was left there uh, in the South Texas heat and uh, so I wrote this song and I'm upset that it's still this much time and I'm still having to sing this song. The Mayflower sailed over the sea 
and soon they came by the score. They sailed for land, for liberty, and welcomed they were to the shore, to a part of the Garden of Eden, a taste from the Holy Grail. When our country was young, brave songs were sung at the start of the Freedom Trail. So give us your time, give us your week, and those who still yearn for freedom. We hold the hope and the shelter they seek, and all who come here are welcome, isn't that it? To a part of a garden of Eden, a taste from the Holy Grail. If there's hope in your heart, you're offered a part at the start of the Freedom Trail. Seventeen Mexican nationals came They're crossing illegal but hard won Despite all the risks They came just the same Into that South Texas sun For a part of the garden of Eden, a taste from the Holy Grail. But they ran out of luck in the back of a truck at the start of the Freedom Trail. They ran, they ran out of luck at the start. Thank you. Thank you. Even Adam had it all right there in the garden. Or so it seemed 99% of the time. With no enemies, no cares, no risks. But wouldn't you know it, the no risk aspect cropped up every so often and that other 1% of the time. Not to the point of being a constant itch, mind you, yet recurring just the same. Now the god of this garden was quite generous, providing them with ample food and limitless wonders of nature. However, he was most possessive of this one particular tree which he chose not to share with them. Indeed, he was a kind but stern ruler of his utopian territory. Nonetheless, even Adam had noticed this God did display an almost human mode of vanity. Did he not create them in his own image and likeness? Actually, even Adam were indebted to him for that as well. Now one fine day, 
not to say they weren't all fine days, a serpent appeared, dangling from the very tree whose fruit they were forbidden to partake of. Good day, he said to Eve as she was passing by. I don't believe we've met, she replied. I'm Eve. Oh, I know who you are, said the serpent. I haven't come around till now, as I deemed you weren't ready to receive the enlightenment I wish to share with you. What is this enlightenment you're privy to, asked Eve. It's called freedom, said the serpent in a hushed tone. It's the one thing your God has not provided for you. You need me for that. Hang on, said Eve, till I go fetch Adam. We're in this together, you know. Oh, I know, crowed the serpent. By all means, bring him hither. <laughs> Even Adam awoke the next day, having brooded over the serpent's visionary exhortation and decided to risk it. They went straight to the tree of knowledge of good and evil, plucked its fruit, bit into it, and passed it back and forth till it was consumed. Then Eve and Adam both felt a mysterious, mischievous high. They knew of good. They knew of evil. And they also knew of free will. Their act of defiance liberated them from a life of no risk, no failure, no success. They now felt empowered to venture forth from the garden. The serpent merely muttered, Amor Fati, as he nonchalantly disposed of the core. As a footnote, Amor Fati means in Latin, love thy fate, first used by the serpent, then later championed by Friedrich Nietzsche. Thank you. Rich creme fraiche, mouth feel of fat with flavors of moist grassy herbs, smelling first of oranges, white blossoms swelling juicy and sweet, and then of rosemary, the herb of remembrance strangely turning warm or cool as it can be accepted, causing such relaxation, a near sleep, inspiring contentment, a relaxed smile, then a humming, growing to a melody, fruiting into a song with words which release pain like the blues in a sweet, low moan. No piercing pain, no grieving, no regrets, no vengeance, no jealousy for what others may have. Take this and may you find that peace which seems most impossible. Give us your tired, your hungry, your poor, those willing to earn their citizenship. Give us America's tired, hungry, and poor, those that cannot fend for themselves, so that all may become educated and self-reliant. To be under one, many, or no God, part of the Pledge of Allegiance, not its shadow. In the land of the free, in the home of the brave, how could we ever let any man be slave? How could the icon of American liberty have been a woman who could not vote? Standing before the ark of American liberty, feel the footsteps of your ancestral people taking their first step in freedom. Shed tears of joy for everyone taking their first step overshadowed by clarity of heartache. 
the little boys and little girls, mothers and fathers, who took their first step without the hand of the other. If we believe all men and women are created equal, then why are some born into upper class educated families and others into abject poverty? It's not our culture that brings us here. It's having culture. It's not anyone's culture. It's everyone's culture. When government fails to meet this obligation, it is the responsibility of the people to alter, change, institute new, to organize, to better serve their safety and happiness. Freedom is hard. Equality is harder. Morality is unrelenting. Give us all tired, hungry, and poor, whose vocabulary is void of the word convenient. All tired, hungry, and poor, to be inspired with confidence so they will no longer suffer. May these words forever serve Lady Liberty and all of mankind. Thank you. Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get in a $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you.